When considering a firm's supply decisions, it's important to consider both the minimum of the average variable cost and the minimum of the average cost curve. So if the price is below the minimum of average cost, you're going to exit in the long run. But if the price is below the minimum of average variable cost, you're going to shut down in the short run. So it's worthwhile to have practical knowledge about how to actually solve for these minimum values here. And if you don't know calculus, it's worth having a trick that doesn't use calculus. The first observation is that marginal cost is eventually increasing. This implies that marginal cost stands a chance of starting out below average variable cost and average cost and ending up above average cost and average variable cost. Now the second observation is that marginal cost is the incremental cost. It's the added cost of producing additional units. And so in this sense, marginal cost gets averaged into both average variable cost and average cost. So now let's consider what the graph actually looks like. Now what you'll see is that for both average cost and average variable cost, marginal cost cuts right through the minimum. Now there's a very good reason for this, and it has to do with both of these two facts. First fact implies that marginal cost will start below both average variable cost and average cost. Actually, it has the same intercept as average variable cost, but in many cases it decreases faster and then actually cuts through the minimum of average variable cost. So that's the first observation, is that it starts below. Now, the second observation says that when it starts below the average cost curves, What's happening is we're averaging in a lower marginal cost. We're averaging in lower per unit cost, and that means that these averages are declining. So as you can see, these are downward sloping average cost curves. Average variable cost and average cost start off by decreasing, and that's because marginal cost is below both of those curves. Now what happens is, is that as marginal cost increases, it increases past the point of average cost and average variable cost. So when marginal cost is above both, both are increasing. When marginal cost is above average variable cost, well average variable cost is increasing. And the reason is that we're averaging in higher per unit costs, and so that's going to increase that average. And so what we'll see is that a very useful way to figure out where these minimum values are on average variable cost and average cost is just to use this relationship. At the minimum of those average cost curves, marginal cost equals that average cost curve. So, if we wanted to find the minimum of average variable cost, we'd set marginal cost equal to average variable cost. And if we wanted to find the minimum of average cost, we could do the same thing, but with average cost. The interesting thing here is that economics has become a substitute for calculus. Usually you think that finding the minimum of a curvy line would be a really hard or potentially a hard calculus problem. Here, what we've done is we've reduced it to an economics problem, basically saying, well, think about how these curves are related to one another. If you have a formula for marginal cost, you have a formula for average variable cost, you can find the minimum by just setting the two equal to each other. Okay, so here are um, some marginal cost, an average variable cost, and an average cost. And we can use just this information to figure out where the minimum of the average variable cost curve is and where the minimum of the average cost curve is. Remember, we're interested in that because this is going to be the shutdown point and this is going to be the point at which firms would exit. And so let's go ahead and think about what, how to figure this out. To find the minimum, just set marginal cost equal to average variable cost. So we've done that. Now we can just collect terms. Adding Q to both sides gives us a negative Q over here, and subtracting one-third Q squared gives us a two-third Q. And now we can factor out a Q, and it looks like we have two solutions. One solution is a solution that always exists between marginal cost and average variable cost, that at Q equals zero, the two are going to be equal. And the other solution is going to be sort of in here, is at a quantity of Q equals one and a half, or three halves, that's going to be the minimum of the average variable cost curve. And so we could go and plug this back in to either our marginal cost or our average variable cost, and that'll give us the actual minimum, uh, that would give us the actual value of the minimum of the average variable cost. Uh, let's use the marginal cost. 
just plugging in the Q that minimizes average variable cost. It's going to be equal to marginal cost at that point. And so at a price of 3.25, uh, price below that, uh, the firm will not produce at all. And price above that, the firm will actually produce. Now, we could use the same trick to figure out what the minimum of the average cost curve is. And it turns out the algebra is going to be a bit more difficult in this case. So if we set marginal cost equal to average cost, that'll give us what the minimum of the average cost is going to be once we solve for Q. First things first, we can cancel the fours. Let's multiply every term by Q. Now we can bring the terms together and solve for what, uh, what the equation is going to be. And so once we went ahead and grouped all of the terms, we get this, uh, this cubic equation. Um, this isn't an especially easy thing to solve in this example. And it turns out that if you want to have uh, a, an example that works out uh, graphically the way we typically depict it, well, you need to have uh, you need to have a squared term in these in these average and marginal costs to get sort of the parabolic shape. But the trouble is that actually getting the algebra to work out, you actually get like a cubic equation here. And that causes uh, some problems in actually solving it. Um, so I took the liberty in graphing this to come up with an approximate solution. Uh, the solution was the quantity was a little bit bigger than 3. And so we can say at a quantity of around 3, marginal cost and average cost are going to be equal, and that's going to be the minimum of average cost. So let's go ahead and plug into average cost to figure out what that break-even price is going to be. And so approximately the break-even price, uh, once we plug in and we solve for this, the break-even price is going to be approximately 7 and one-third. Uh, it's going to be uh, significantly bigger than the shutdown price that we figured out to be uh, 3.25. And so we can go ahead and put all of this together on a graph and we can see how all this looks. And so this is approximately what the graph will look like. We've got our average cost being at a minimum at around 3. We've got our average variable cost at a minimum at 1.5. The break-even price is 7 and a third, and the shutdown price is at 3.25. And notice what we've used is we used economics rather than calculus to solve the problem of where these break-even, these choke-off prices are. And that's going to be a really useful and uh, fruitful way to analyze uh, firm supply decisions.